This is Australia, the sixth largest country in the world, with a territory of about 2,969,907 square miles, the largest in Oceania, the third largest English-speaking country, and the largest whose hemisphere is entirely in the southern hemisphere. And despite its vast size, it is sparsely inhabited. You may have seen a movie set in Australia featuring landscapes and vast territories without any people around. Well, that is a very accurate representation of the country. Australia is one of the least populated countries in the world, with a population density of only 9 people per square mile. To give you an idea of how low that is, Monaco has more than 47,000 inhabitants per square mile, Singapore has around 20,000, and Malta around 4,000. Even countries like Mexico, which are also very extensive territorially, are far apart from Australia. While in Mexico you would find 167 people per square mile, in Australia only 9. Stay with me to learn more about this impressive country. Why most Australians live in just a few areas Why it is one of the least populated countries, its extreme geography, the most isolated towns and cities, and more. Where do most Australians live? Populated and isolated areas In other large countries around the world, you can find densely populated cities in central parts and almost all areas of the country. But this is not the case in Australia, where only medium or very small towns exist in central areas. The same is true for most of the West, North, and South Central. Of the eight most populated cities in Australia, four are in the East and Southeast. Sydney, with over 5 million people. Melbourne, with over 5 million. Brisbane, with over 2 million. And Canberra, with around 450,000 people. Adelaide, with over 1 million Australians, is very close to the southeast. Exceptions are Perth, Hobart, and Darwin. Perth, the fourth most populated city in Australia, with over 2 million people, is in the southwest. This city is so far from the populated areas that it is considered the most isolated city in the world. Hobart, the capital of Tasmania Island, with just over 251,000 inhabitants, is also in the southeast, but not on mainland Australia. And Darwin is in the central north, with just over 140,000 inhabitants. As a curiosity, the Kiwirkura community, near the center, is the most isolated in the country. One of the most remote towns is Coburpetti, located in the south and 526 miles away from Adelaide. We will talk more about it later. One of the most isolated cities is Karata, located in the west with about 17,000 people, more than 932 miles away from Perth. Why do most Australians live in the east and southeast of the country, and why is it so depopulated? The most important reason is that most of the interior and west of the country is desert, with very extreme conditions that hinder human settlements. As you can see here, almost the entire territory is desert, except for the north and east. 70% of Australia is considered arid or semi-arid, making Oceania the driest continent on the planet. Another reason is that Australia is very, very large, being the sixth largest country in the world, surpassing huge countries like India, Argentina, Mexico, or Algeria. In fact, it is larger than the European Union. The availability of water is a significant challenge, as there are no permanent water sources in the deserts of Great Sandy, Victoria, Gibson, Tanami, and Simpson. This accounts for an area of more than 386,000 square miles with limited access to water. On the other hand, coastal areas with rainfall comprise about 5% of Australian territory, and this is where 95% of the population is concentrated. One reason for the sparse population in northern Australia, despite it not being as desert-like as the central and western parts, is that the soils are nutrient-deficient, and the lack of mountains results in little rainfall and very few rivers. Groundwater is also scarce or too saline to be used for irrigation. Australia's Extreme Geography Australia spans nearly 2,485 miles in width and 2,299 miles from north to south, covering an area of 2,969,907 square miles. It shares maritime borders with New Zealand, Papua New Guinea, Indonesia, and East Timor. It is the driest, least populated, and flattest continent. 
The country is divided into six states, two internal territories, and several external territories. The states are New South Wales, Queensland, South Australia, Tasmania, Victoria, Western Australia, Northern Territory, and Australian Capital Territory. Australia's geography is diverse, with snow-covered mountains in the Australian Alps and Tasmania, vast tropical and temperate deserts, grasslands, heathlands, and forests. The western half of the country is the Western Plateau, which is generally flat, though it has several mountain ranges that divide it. In the eastern part are the Eastern Highlands, close to Australia's east coast. Here, temperate forests receive more rainfall, making human settlements denser. Between the Eastern Highlands and the Western Plateau lie the central lowlands, formed by the Murray-Darling Basin and Lake Eyre Basin. Over 80% of Australia has annual rainfall of less than 23.6 inches. Factors contributing to the dryness of Australia's landmass include cold ocean currents off the west coast, the low elevation of landforms, the dominance of high-pressure systems, and the shape of the landmass. Regarding climate, the tropical savanna zone is warm year-round, and summers are hot in most of the country, with temperatures reaching up to 86 degrees Fahrenheit in January. Winters are warm in the north and cool in the south. Night frosts are common in some areas. And in the mountainous region of New South Wales, temperatures frequently drop to 23 degrees Fahrenheit below zero. The extreme southeast and southwest have a temperate climate, part is rainforest, part grassland, and part desert. Climate change in Australia Climate change has affected Australia since the early 21st century, making the climate hotter, increasing wildfires, droughts, floods, and lengthening fire seasons. Over the past five decades, warming has been twice as rapid as in the previous five decades. Rainfall has also decreased as part of climate change's effects by 10 to 20% in the 1970s in southwest Australia and moderately decreased in the 1990s in the southeast region. The desert or semi-arid region occupies 40% of the territory and is home to only 3% of Australians. The desert areas are mainly four. The Great Sandy Desert, the Great Victoria Desert, the Gibson Desert, and the Simpson Desert. Among the environmental issues facing Australia are soil erosion due to overgrazing, industrial development, urbanization, and poor agricultural practices, as well as increasing soil salinity and desertification. Additionally, the Great Barrier Reef, located off the northeast coast, is threatened by increased shipping and its popularity as a tourist destination. The Consequences of Depopulation The depopulation of large Australian regions has resulted in these areas relying on activities such as mining and livestock grazing. Mining generally takes place in very remote locations, while beef production occurs on vast tracts of land that receive little rainfall. The population of regional Australia is supported by cattle and sheep grazing. On the other hand, the existence of large, sparsely populated territories lowers birth rates, so the Australian government has allocated resources to programs aimed at increasing the population, which would lead to improved trade conditions, increased tourism, and higher tax revenues. In demographic matters, Australia's population has experienced aging, and for this reason, the country has sought to attract more migrants to maintain the percentages of economically active population. Australia's Most Isolated Towns and Cities Cape York One of the most remote places in Australia is the Cape York Peninsula, located in northern Queensland. Cape York is situated at the tip of the peninsula and is the northernmost point of mainland Australia. This area is the largest untouched space in the entire country, with flat terrain, and half of the land being used for livestock. The wooded savannas, tropical rainforests, and other intact habitats are globally recognized for their environmental importance. Although a significant portion of the peninsula remains pristine, wildlife is threatened by industry, overgrazing, and introduced species by settlers. Cape York is 727 miles from Cairns and almost 1,800 miles from the state capital, Brisbane. A four-wheel drive vehicle is needed to reach this region. Cobra Petty 
It is a small town in northern South Australia with just under 2,000 inhabitants. Being a desert area, temperatures in January can exceed 113 degrees Fahrenheit, while in July they can drop below 32 degrees Fahrenheit. Known as the opal capital of the world, the town has a large number of opal mines. Since the first opal mine was discovered in 1915, the mining industry has been the mainstay of this region. The town is so hot that locals have excavated houses, hotels, churches, and bars into the rock to naturally lower temperatures. Perth Located more than 1,240 miles from the nearest urban settlement, Adelaide, Perth is considered the most isolated city in the world. The city's major economic development began when gold deposits were discovered in Kalgoorlie and after the completion of the Transcontinental Railway in 1917. Geographically, Perth is closer to East Timor or Jakarta, Indonesia than Sydney. To reach Sydney, one must travel 2,050 miles, while East Timor is 1,740 miles away and Jakarta is 1,860 miles away. A significant part of Perth was built on freshwater wetlands, which stretch from Herdsman Lake to Claysbrook Cove. Perth is currently the fourth most populous city in Australia, with 2,192,229 inhabitants. Alice Springs Located in the middle of the Australian desert, Alice Springs has a population of 28,605. The town's population relies on tourism, as the nearby Uluru Mountain is a popular tourist destination. This city is the third largest in the Northern Territory, covering 10% of the region. It is known as Mparantwe by the Arerente, the original inhabitants of this region who have been here for thousands of years. The desert area in which it is located is known as the Red Center, while southeast of Alice Springs is the Simpson Desert, a vast wilderness with giant red sand dunes and rocky formations. Alice Springs was originally a service town for the pastoral industry, but with the introduction of the railway line, its economy diversified and developed further. Trains, buses, and flights are available to reach this city. Australian Outback The desert area of Australia is known as the Outback. It consists of remote arid lands with sparse populations where Aboriginal tribes have preserved their local traditions. The regions that make up the outback are the Northern Territory, Western Australia, South Australia, New South Wales, and Queensland. The fertile parts of this region are used for livestock farming, which is one of the main economic activities alongside tourism and mining. The Anangu Pichanjanjara Yangkuni Jajara is an extensive local Aboriginal government area located in northwest South Australia. It is currently inhabited by the Pitanjatjara, Yangkunitjatjara, and Unganyatjara peoples, who together form a population of 2,500 people. Geographically, this region is unified by low population density, an almost untouched natural environment and land uses. The scarcity of industrial land use has led to the outback being recognized as one of the largest remaining intact natural areas on the planet making it a region of great importance alongside boreal forests and tundra regions in North America, as well as the Sahara and Gobi deserts and tropical rainforests. The grazing industry is the largest in the outback. Cattle, sheep, and goats graze in intact ecosystems, and many of the grazing properties are certified as organic livestock producers. Australia is the world's largest certified organic production area, thanks to the 42 million acres found in the outback region. Some of the most notable tourist sites in the outback include Ayers Rock, Kings Canyon, the Olgas, and the McDonnell Ranges. The History of Colonization and Development of Australia The Australian Aboriginal culture is one of the oldest on the planet, and it is estimated that the occupation of this region began about 50,000 to 65,000 years ago. When Europeans arrived in Australia, the Aboriginal people were hunter-gatherers and had a population of around 750,000 people. The Aboriginal people were composed of two groups, the Aboriginal peoples of the Australian mainland and Tasmania, and the Islander peoples of the Torres Strait in the seas between Queensland and Papua New Guinea. At the time of colonization, there were about 250 Aboriginal languages. Today, most Aboriginal people speak English with a mix of Aboriginal vocabulary, which has given rise to Australian Aboriginal English. 
Before European settlement, the distribution of the indigenous population was similar to that of the current Australian population, with the majority living in the southeast along the Murray River. The first European sighting of Australia is attributed to the Dutch. The ship Dufkin sighted the coast of the Cape York Peninsula in 1606. It was the Dutch who mapped the northern part of Australia, naming the continent New Holland. In 1770, James Cook mapped the eastern coast and claimed it for Great Britain, naming it New South Wales. In 1783, the British government sent a fleet of ships with the aim of establishing a penal colony in New South Wales. The colony expanded and developed an economy based on agriculture, fishing, whaling, trade with incoming ships, and construction. Subsequently, this colony became a civil society. The indigenous population decreased throughout the following century due to diseases and conflicts with settlers. There was resistance from the Aboriginal people to the British invasion, which led to retaliation and even massacres. European diseases greatly affected the Aboriginal population as smallpox, measles, and influenza spread among indigenous camps, becoming one of the main factors in the decline of the original population. During the 19th century, the British continued to settle in other areas, in 1827, Edmund Lockyer established a settlement at King George Albany, which is now Albany. In 1829, the Swan River Colony was founded where Perth is today, and in the following years, separate colonies were created in New South Wales. Between 1820 and 1830, there were numerous border conflicts between settlers and Aboriginal people, which led colonial governments to develop policies to protect the Aboriginal people. Although the aim was to protect them, the result was their criminalization, which led to the closure of protection offices in 1857 due to high costs and failure to meet original objectives. When the gold rush began in 1850, migrants from China, North America, and Europe started arriving in Australia, increasing the population until the Federation of the Colonies was achieved in 1901, thus establishing the Commonwealth of Australia and the entry into force of the Constitution. In 1907, Australia received the status of a self-governing dominion within the British Empire. In 1931, with the Statute of Westminster, constitutional ties between Australia and the United Kingdom were severed. During World War I, Australia joined the Allies, as it did in World War II. Following these two conflicts, the country managed to develop and raise its standard of living. At the same time, migration of Europeans to the country was encouraged, who were called New Australians. Today, Australian culture is a blend of influences from various cultures, such as Anglo-Celtic, Australian Aboriginal, and American culture. The early settlers introduced British and Irish cuisine, an influence that remains to this day in dishes such as fish and chips or meat pie. There are also Eastern influences, especially from Cantonese cuisine, which transformed Australian gastronomy and introduced new dishes, recipes, and flavors. Would you like to live in Australia? In which area and why? Let us know in the comments. We are interested in your opinion. Visit this video about Iceland to learn about another sparsely populated country. If you like this video about Australia, give it a like, share it with family and friends, and subscribe with the notification bell activated so you don't miss other videos like this.